everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a rainbow. Now this is an updated uh, pattern. I have got other videos with rainbows on my channel. You will see a link for them here. Uh, but uh, I thought it was time to make a new pattern. So this one is slightly bigger than the ones I have done before. So this is why I called it the extra large version. And as you can see, oh my goodness, it has lovely tassels. Now you can make it, of course, without tassels. And then it looks like this. Um, that's perfectly all right. But I am also uh, giving you the instructions, of course, towards the end of the video, how to make these tassels. Now. What I have also updated are the colours. Okay, so um, I had uh, in the previous videos, I have a different colourway. I just wanted to try a new colourway, a muted one, a uh, sort of a less bright one. And I came up with tomato, spice, saffron, pistachio, cloud blue, lavender and grape. And I am really, really loving these colours. Of course, they are all Starcraft Special DK. And of course, they are all my stash colours because I have to make do these days. So uh, go and dive into your stash. See if you can find yourself a rainbow. Of course, you don't have to follow my instructions if you don't have those colours. Um, I suggest you go online and find um, you know, another colour combination or just go into your stash and see what goes together. So yes, my updated rainbow pattern with uh, larger size tassels and new colours. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please, please share this video with people you think who might be looking for a rainbow pattern. And also remember, to like the video and please subscribe because that way you will uh, become a member of my uh, community of my channel and you will be notified of every new video that I post and I have something else up my sleeve a rainbow related as well so subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on that so what else do you need for this project a stitch marker to indicate your first stitch then here, scissors, of course. I am using a three for this pattern. Um, the yarn is prescribed as a four, but you know I always go down half a hook size. And even for this pattern, to make it nice and tight, I am using a three. And if you are putting tassels on, you'll need something that you can wind your wool round uh, to get the same measurement. So I've got sort of this empty chocolates box that I've been using, and that's the perfect size. Let's get started with a slip knot. So holding the yarn in your hand like this, wrap it round your fingers twice like so. Then bring the back one to the front, then the back one to the front, and then pull up the back one. Take your fingers out, and this has given you an adjustable loop. Insert your hook and adjust the loop so it's tight around your hook. Well, not too tight. Then, holding on the, to the yarn like so, we are going to yarn over and bring the this yarn through the loop on your hook, like so. Yarn over again, through the loop. Yarn over, through the loop. So we are going to chain, and I've done one, two, three chains, and we are going to do 12 chains. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Now to count your chains, you count the Vs. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and 12. In your last chain, you are going to put a stitch marker. Okay, so now we are going to start the first round, so to speak, and we are going to do two more chains. This chain now acts as our first double crochet coming out of our first stitch. Okay, because the, ch the stitch, the chain with the stitch marker in is our first stitch. Now we are going to do two double crochets 
in the next stitch so not the one with the stitch marker in but the next one so in so you yarn over insert pick up two V's if you can yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two again yarn over into the same stitch insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two okay so basically what we have done we've got one stitch and then one double crochet and then two double crochets in the next stitch now to make sure uh, we are going to remember to do the first stitch in that chain we are just going to move the stitch marker to the top of that chain so we have this V which belongs to this stitch that V which belongs to this stitch and then in here this V here is going to be our very first stitch of our next round but just so we don't lose you know, sight of it now we are going to indicate that with our stitch marker just to help you find it again later on now let's continue with our repeat that we have to do here so one double crochet two double crochet one two one two and each time in the next stitch so in the first stitch that you see here now you do one double crochet in the next stitch you do two so one and two in the next stitch and if you find it hard to pick up the V so where I pick up is sort of where that V meets I go into there so yarn over go into there this one is one so that's at the bottom there's two sort of you know legs of the V there and that's where you go in and you do your double crochet so I've got to do two in the next stitch there we go and one in the next and two in the next now this ratio will change for every row but I am going to tell you how you can remember to do it so don't panic so one now I need to do another one in here and two I've got two stitches left so one and two in that very very last one make sure you can get into it yeah I am in not picking up both loops unfortunately but that doesn't really matter as long as you get into that last one it's fine okay it still looks okay so this is where we are at now so as you can see your work is already arching we are going to cut off our grape color and you just pull through the loop like so now we are going to go to lavender where is the end <laughs> here it is and once again you are going to make your slip knot see insert your hook adjust the loop hold on to your yarn this time We've made it easy on ourselves because, of course, we've got that stitch marker in there. So we are going to take out the stitch marker, not losing sight of the actual stitch that it was in. Yarn over, insert your hook where the stitch marker was. Pull up a loop and do a standing double crochet. So this row, we are going to do a repeat ratio of four. So that means you do one double crochet on its own, 
another double crochet on its own in the next stitch, another double crochet in the next stitch. So one, two, three, and then number four is going to go in with number three. So one, two, three, and number four goes in with number three. There we go. Okay. Again, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And then we have left one, two, three and four there we go okay so this is our second round and it's nicely arching and it is still lying nice and flat and that's of course what we want okay on to the next color so cloud blue again same thing do your slip knot insert your hook and be ready now it is easier to recognize that first stitch although although i have to say this always closes up for me so you can see there's a knot there that is the actual stitch that you need to go into so i just hold on to the knot and sort of wiggle it about a bit and there it is see there is that little v appearing so yarn over into that little v and you do your standing double crochet then this time our repeat is five so one two three four and five goes in with four there we go okay so as you can tell each row we are going to add a number so we're counting from three four five so pistachio will have a repeat of six saffron seven spice eight tomato nine okay so one two three four and five goes in with number four okay so this is a way for you to remember when you have to put your increases in because if you don't put enough increases it's not going to lie flat if you put too many increases it's going to go wobbly so one two three and then here four and five and i remember it by counting sort of giving my row a number and that's the amount of stitches that I count and then the last one of that number goes in with the previous one so this time it's five one two three four and this time I'm counting to five so five goes in with number four one and it just works out each time that that is your exact um, increased ratio that you need for, like I said, one, two, three, four, for making sure your rainbow is going to be nice and flat. One, 
two, three, four, and then the fifth one into the last stitch as well. There we go. Okay. And doing it this way makes it quite easy, actually, because all you have to remember is to count to the correct number, of course. So if you've forgotten where you are, you can still count your previous row and say, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this was five. So now the next row I am going to do six. So again, slip stitch, insert into that first one here. As you can see, it closed up a bit. So make sure you open it up and you use that stitch. Okay. Yarn over and go into it and do your standing double crochet. There we go. Now you are going to count to six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six goes in with number five. And this is how you are going to continue for the rest of the colours. OK, so I am going to leave you now and I will see you when you have finished your rainbow. One, two, three, four, five and six. See you in a moment. <laughs> Okay, so I have done all my colours and as you can see it's lying nice and flat. Now if you uh, just want to finish your rainbow now that's fine, uh, just sew in all the ends and it will look like this, okay. But if you are going to put tassels on like I am, uh, you will need to get your cardboard. I have this box of chocolates which I've kept, well there's no chocolates in it anymore, <laughs> But I, you know, that sort of revolution is sort of the perfect um, length for me. So I am going to start, of course, with the grape one. I hold it like this and I wind it round about six times. Three, four, five, six. Hold it like this. Then I cut off the yarn. <laughs> cut off in the middle of that box there. And then at the top here, you pick it up and you hold it in your fingers like so. OK, now I am not sewing in my ends because I am going to incorporate them into my tassels. So this is how I'm going to be doing this. This is my front. OK, and this is my back. Can you see the difference in the stitches? So there seems to be more sort of bobbly bits here than there are here. So with the back facing you, you're going to put a bigger hook. I'm using a five for this. It doesn't matter. You can use the same one, but I just like to use a bigger hook around. Let me just put it in and then I'll show you where I've put it around that first. No, that's not the first double. Yeah, the first double crochet there. OK, so in there. Then you put all those strands against your hook. Keep them tensioned and you bring the hook with all those strands through that location there where you inserted that hook. Then you pull up the hook slightly so you make this loop bigger. Take out your hook. Now you're going to have to need to use your fingers. Fingers like so. Then grab all the strands. So also the one that you have hanging out and incorporate it into your fingers, bring it through the loop and gently pull. This now has ensured that you've got the nice bit of that tassel at the front and what I call the ugly bit at the back. Okay, and your end is also incorporated, so that's gone. So you don't need to think about that anymore. Think about sewing that in or anything. You don't need to do that. OK, so this is how you are going to continue 
for the rest of your tassels of course and I will show you the finished project in a moment so keep watching I'm going to do it on a time lapse <music> Okay, so that's that. That was great fun. And now all I need to do, look at that, is just tie up the unruly ends. Um, I don't like it sort of too manicured. Um, I don't mind if there's a couple that are a bit longer, but I don't want those sort of sticking out. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of make sure it is sort of reasonably, yeah, but I don't mind that. That's fine for me. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Do share this video if you uh, think somebody else might want to make a uh, rainbow as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Don't forget to like and share this video. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my uploads. Also, make sure you're a member of our Facebook group. Here are some suggested videos for you. I hope you enjoy watching them. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!